me that much. I figured I'd just stay sort of neutral, like Switzerland. Anyway, I wrote down in my memoirs what everybody's last desire would be if he was killed in the war. Well, I never intended to show it to anyone, but still I felt sort of ashamed of betraying their secret private thoughts. Possibly the only one that felt worse than I did was Tennessee on the floor. 34, 35, 36. <laughs> 48 hour pass. Hot damn. Ugh. That means if I make it with one woman every four hours, I could have. Well, I could have a lot of women. <laughs> I'd be careful if I you. What you get? Yeah. <laughs> Relief. <laughs> son of a bitch. God damn son of a bitch. Now, uh, what's wrong? Someone broke into my footlocker last night. They, they emptied my wallet. They took my pay and every cent I had in the world. Sixty-two bucks. The dirty bastard. H how do you know it was stolen? Hey, maybe you lost it. I counted it before I hit the sack last night. I was saving it for the big weekend. Don't think I'm not wise to who did it. Maybe they was both in on this one together. How do you know it was them? Maybe it was one of us. Was it? Was it? You think I'm stupid enough to pay if I stole your money? It was Epstein, I'm telling you. He's trying to get back at me for what I said to him the other night. Maybe he's still sore at you, but he's not the kind of guy to steal your money. Oh, and, and what are you, Hennessy? One of those Irish Jews? All I did was call him a couple of names. Where I come from, we're all Polacks, Dagos, niggas, and Sheenies. That stuff don't mean crap to me. You're a Mick. What do I care? Half Mick, half nigger. Are you serious? Yeah. My father was Irish, my mother was colored. Ah, uh, you couldn't be colored. They wouldn't let you in with the rest of us. I never told anyone. Right. Yeah, but I guessed it. It was something I couldn't put my finger on, but I knew there was something wrong with you. I'm black Irish. And that's as colored as I get. <laughs> but now we know how you think, don't we, Wachowski? I'm laying for you, Hennessy. As soon as I get the bastard that took my money, I'll settle my score with you. Hey, does Tubi know yet? I guess so. He must have heard me. I mean, someone steal 62 bucks? People hear about it. Gentlemen, I think we have a problem. All those wishing to help me solve it, move your asses in here before the fire squad leaves the weekend. All the devil! Teen Hook! I've been in this man's army 12 years, 4 months, and 23 days. And during my tenure as a non-commissioned officer, I've had to put up with everything from mutiny to sodomy. I consider mutiny and sodomy relatively minor offenses. Mutiny is an act of aggression due to a rise in expression of unreached repressed feelings. Sodomy is a result of doing something you don't want to do with someone you don't want to do it with because of no access to do what you want to do with someone you can't get to do it with. <laughs> Makes sense if you pick it up slowly. <laughs> Burglary, on the other hand, is a cheap shit crime, and I frown on that. Now, the past 31 days, you boys made some fine progress. You're not fighting soldiers yet, but I've matched you up against some Nazi cocktail waitresses any time. <laughs> That's why it was my recommendation that this platoon receive a 48 hour pass. But until we clear up the mystery of Private Wachowski's missing $62, there will be no 48 hour passes issued until you are old and gray soldiers of World War II, fighting as American Legionnaires in the Honest Day Parade. I'm asking for the guilty party to step forward and place the missing $62 on this here footlocker within the next. 30 seconds. I offer no leniency, no forgiveness, and no abstention from punishment. 
What I do offer is honor and integrity and respect of his fellow soldier, knowing that it was his act of courage which enabled them to enjoy the brief freedom they so richly deserve. I'm counting down to 30. It is of this time that heroes are made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The $62 death, anyone cares to count it? I don't think that'll be necessary, Private Epstein. Well, Kowski, pick up your money. I said don't count it, boy. Private Epstein, do you have anything to say? No, Sergeant. May I ask then why you decided to put back the money? I chose to. You chose to, knowing full well that swift and just punishment may be inflicted upon you if and when this is reported to the commanding officer? I know it only too well. You could have kept quiet about this incident. Chances are no one would have known or been any the wiser. I didn't see any reason why five innocent men should suffer a loss of privilege because of one guilty one. <laughs> Dr. Wachowski, is it your wish that I report this incident and the guilty party to the commanding officer? I just want my money back, Sergeant. I can deal with the one that took it on my own. That night, at one hundred dollars I want to do this better. It's all carelessness and complacency. Wachowski's Walt was lying in an open footlocker, inviting weakness, avarice, and temptation. I took the $62 from Wachowski and put the empty wall in its place. I did it to teach you a lesson. Instead, I got something to read. <laughs> Part of you know you such a goddamn ignorant fool to take a blame for something you are completely innocent of. The army has its logic, I have my own. The army's logic, as you call it, is to instill obedience, discipline, and unquestioned faith in superiors. What the hell is yours? Since I'm not guilty of a crime, I reserve the privilege to keep my own motives a matter of confidentiality. That's where you're wrong, soldier. Confessing to a crime you didn't commit is no less an offense than not confessing to one you did commit. That's called obstruction of justice. You may not like our rules, boy, but by that you're going to clean up a toilet and piss pot until you learn them. Confine the barracks until further notice. The rest of you are on 48 hour leave. Fall out. Epstein, I would like a word with you in private. Now, listen to me, you frost on a mound of horse shit. You're taking me on, ain't you? Well, you're making a big mistake because I got a nutcracker that crushes the testicles of men who take me on. How the hell do you think you could beat me? I'm not trying to beat you, Sergeant. I'm trying to work with you. I think you're low on batteries, Epstein. I think some time will turn off your fountain of knowledge. What do you mean, working with me? I don't think it's necessary to dehumanize a man to get him to perform. You can get better results raising our spirits than lowering our dignity. <clears throat> Why did you put back money you knew you didn't take? Because I knew you did. Well, I saw you take it. I think that inventing a crime that didn't exist well, just to enforce your theories of discipline is the end of Dominic's conception. I can arrange, Epson, that from now on you get nothing to eat in the mess hall except cotton balls. Did you ever eat cotton balls, Epstein? You can chew them until 1986. It doesn't swallow! Men do not face enemy machine guns because they have been treated with kindness. They face them because they've had a bayonet up their ass. I don't want them human, I want them obedient. The Egyptian kings made their slaves obedient. Eventually, well, they lost their slaves and their kingdom. Yeah, well, that may be. But before I do, you're going to build me the biggest goddamn pyramid you ever saw. I'm trying to save these boys' lives from crawling bookworm. Stay in my way and I'll pulverize you to chicken droppings. This should be an interesting contest, Sergeant. After I crush your testicles, you can replace them with cotton balls. <laughs> and the end of all can set Jesus Christ. <laughs> Okay, so who really stole the money? Toomey stole Wachowski's 62 bucks. Epstein stole Toomey's idea of stealing Wachowski's 62 bucks. Why? Did you ever see one big fat walrus screw another big fat walrus? 
There's no point to it, but they do it anyway. Come and tell I tell you, this army is really dumb. The Navy is dumb. We're gonna have to take a train to Europe. Come and I don't get you, Epstein. What made you do a stupid thing like that? You wouldn't understand. Why not? Am I too dumb? Big dumb Polak, is that what I am? Now who's calling who names? You are. If no one confessed, no one goes on leave. If anyone else had really taken the money, I'd be cleaning toilet bowls anyway. Yeah. How'd you figure that out? Tell me you the reasoning. What? Tell me you did. You weigh both sides of an issue, and then select the side that is the most interesting. Unless, of course, the other guy takes that one first. Well, whatever. Anyhow, I owe you one. You stuck your neck out for us. I like to pay back my debts. You really want to shake my hand, Bukowski? Listen, it's not going to come out again, so take your chance while you got it. Let's not be hypocritical. I did what I did for me, not for you. I'm not going to make any more chew cracks at you, Epstein. Because you're a shit heel no matter what you are. Why do you always do things the hard way? It makes life more interesting. It also makes a lot of problems. Without problems, they would be over at 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I admire what you did back there, Arnold. <laughs> you remind me of my brother sometimes. He was always standing up for his principles, too. Principles are okay, but sometimes they get in the way of reason. Then how do you know which is the right one? You have to get involved. You don't get involved enough, Eugene. What do you mean? Well, you're always standing around watching what's happening. Writing in your book what other people do. You have to get in the middle of it. You have to get involved. Make a contribution to the fight. What fight? Any fight. Well, the one you believe in. Oh, yeah, I understand. Sometimes I feel sort of invisible. Like the shadow. I can see everyone else, but they can't see me. Well, that's what I think writers are, sort of invisible. Not Tolstoy. Well, not Dostoyevsky. Not Herman Melville. Yeah, I have to read those guys. I don't hear any goddamn blushing, Epstein! Look, I gotta go. I have to go get involved. Toilet bowls. <coughs> I'd love to talk to you more, Arnold. Well, I'm available. Well, maybe when I get back Sunday night. Sure. Anytime. Just make sure you don't come back pregnant. Are you kidding? I'm wearing three pairs of socks. <coughs> make sure you put them on the right place. <laughs> so, I was off to Velocity to live out my fantasy. Love and sex. I settled for either one. I put powder and aqua velva in and under every conceivable part of my body. <laughs> I've been waiting for you. All right, let's go. Wait. I need a favor. What is it? Sit down. I want your opinion. Uh, and please, tell the truth. <clears throat> Embrace me, my sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, you irreplaceable you. Don't be a naughty baby. Come to Papa, come to Papa. Do, do, do.
make half an hour. She couldn't make any money that way. Maybe you went twice. Or three times. Wachowski could keep going for six months straight. That's not the point. She gets paid every time. Hey. That's the point. Hey, maybe she gave him a free one for his unusual condition. <laughs> They charge you every time you have a... That's right. <laughs> How do they know when you have one? <laughs> because your eyes spin around, and when they come up on two fires, you just had one. <laughs> this guy for real. Yeah, and he's from New York City, too. <laughs> Can you believe it? I make out on my own. I just never go to places like this. <laughs> Do you want to sit down? And break my concentration? Come on, damn it, I'm gonna piss my... I'm gonna miss my peak. <laughs> what if she's ugly? I mean, really ugly. Ah, close your eyes and pretend it's some girl from high school. I don't want to close my eyes. That's the same thing as doing it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you got somebody underneath you. We're on top of you. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> on top. <laughs> Who would be on top of you? Oh, she would. She could be anywhere. Under a table. <laughs> on a chair. <laughs> or an ironing board. <laughs> an ironing <Iron> board? <laughs> Oh my god, what kind of a girl is this? Oh, can we go into just a regular place? Hey, I didn't mention anything that wasn't regular. I mean, do you have any idea how many possible positions there are? Yeah, sure, I'm not an ignoramus. Well, how many are there? I'm having this conversation with him. All right, then. How many are there? American or worldwide? You don't know shit, Jerome. Well, maybe not actual experience, but I've got all the information I need. Uh, all right, then. How many positions are there? Uh, for how much? Uh, lose a pace for the bank. Don't call it a bank. I'm here for pleasure, not to get back. <laughs> this guy's a riot. All right, for five bucks, then. How many positions are there in the gallery? I'm thinking, give me a minute. You want me to tell you? No. Well, I'll tell you. Seventeen. How do you know? Because <laughs> I've tried them all. <laughs> well, you're wrong. There's at least fifty-two different positions. Fifty-two? Where'd you get that? I saw a dirty deck of cards one. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's worse than empty. You owe me five bucks. Listen, twerp. You're lucky if you do one position. I'm not going to do anything if it's on an iron board. <laughs> Why not? Hey, then you can get your shirt pressed for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 34 minutes. Damn, Wachowski. We should have let the normal guys go first. <laughs> I didn't want my first time to be like this. I really tried to meet someone not. But there are 21,000 soldiers on leave in Biloxi and 14 girls. <laughs> Those are tough odds. Especially since the 14 girls all go, all go to Catholic school and are handcuffed to none. <laughs> well, tell us. She wants to see me again after the war. <laughs> all right, who's next? You go ahead. I just had lunch. I don't want to get cranked. <laughs> All right. I'll try to save a little something for you guys, huh? <laughs> Hi, how you doing? We don't have to do this, you know. There's a dance down to USO. This isn't your first time, but I mean, you've done it before, haven't you? Oh, sure. Are you kidding? Well, not a lot. About five or six times. 
So why are you doing it again? <laughs> You're not through after five or six times. If you live long enough, you've got 12,000 more left. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I'm so scared. I'm never going to see her again. I just don't want to seem foolish. I think I'm afraid she's going to laugh at me. Not if she gets paid for it. Hey, if she laughed at you, you'd be entitled to a full refund. <laughs> You're through already? That was fast. I didn't even make it to the bed. <laughs> I knew I hit my feet too soon. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to go to the dance. How come? I said I did it five or six times before. That it was all the same girl. Well, we're sort of engaged. Oh, uh, she might not like it. Oh, I bet she wouldn't. I didn't know you had a girl. That's terrific. What's her name? Charlene. Charlene. Wow. Sounds sexy. Yeah. Do you think she'll get married? No, it's a 50-50 chance. You see, she's got this other boyfriend up in Albany. So, what are you going to do? Well, the thing is, I don't have a girl. I've got to find out on my own. If seems I says, says I have to get more involved in life, well, I think I'm in the perfect position for an involvement. Okay, maybe I'll see you later. Hey, listen. Hey, if it doesn't go all that right, what I mean, if it's not all that terrific the first time, hey, don't give up on it. Oh, oh, I'm not a quitter. I'm dedicating my life to getting it right. <laughs> Are you putting this in your memoirs? Sure, I put everything in my memoirs. Well, that's good, because people don't like books, books unless there's sex in them. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> and thus, the young man they called Eugene bade farewell to his youth, turned, and entered the temple of fire. Get at it. 
<coughs> Silk stockings, black panties. You interested? Do you sell men's clothing? <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. You're cute, honey. Want me to take your shoes off? I can do it, honest, I can do it. <laughs> this is your first time. My first time? <laughs> Are you kidding? No. That's funny. It's my second time. The first time they were close. <laughs> Don't smoke cigarettes either, do you, honey? How'd you know? You look like your face is on fire. If you want to look older, why don't you try growing a mustache? Well, I did, but it wouldn't go in on the left side. <laughs> What's your name? Rowena. What's yours? My name? Suddenly I can't. Supposing this girl kept a diary. <laughs> well. Jack! Jack Mulgrewby. Yeah! I knew a Tom Mulgrewby once. No! Mine's Mulgrewby. Ooh, not E. <laughs> well, where you from, Jack? Texarkana? <laughs> Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Is that in Texas or Arkansas? Arkansas, I think. <laughs> you think? Well, I moved away from there when I was two. Then we moved to Georgia. Really? <laughs> you a cracker then? What, what's a cracker? It's someone from Georgia. Oh, yeah, I'm a cracker. My whole family crackers. <laughs> Were you born in the Luxe? No, Gulfport. Still live there with my husband. Your husband? You're married? Oh, my God, if he finds me here, he'll kill me. No, he won't. Does he know that you're a... You're a... Sure he does. That's how we met. It's in the Navy. <coughs> was one of my best customers. Still is. You mean you charge your own husband? <laughs> I mean he's my best lover. He's gonna do it from there, cowboy, cause... <laughs> I'm going to have to make some adjustments. <laughs> no. I'm ready. Stuff his back. <laughs> Whatever you like to do. Well, why don't you start and I'll catch up? <laughs> Didn't anybody ever tell you what to do? Well, my brother once showed me, but you look a lot different than my brother. <laughs> You're sweet, honey. I went to high school with a boy like you. Had the biggest damn crush on him. Do you have a hanky? Anything wrong? My nose is running. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 
Santa? Thank you. Listen, I hope this doesn't offend you, but, well, I, I really don't care if this is a wonderful experience or not. I just want to get it over with. <laughs> Whatever you say, honey. Lights on or off. Actually, I'd like a blindfold. <laughs> Oh. <coughs> ah. oh, I did it. I did it. Ah. Anything else, honey? Yes. I'd like two bottles of perfume and a pair of black pants. <laughs> I can't believe what this creep's been writing about us. Listen to this. No matter how lunatic I think Sergeant Toomey is, there is method to his madness. He is winning the war. Each day we lose a little of our own personal personalities and become more obedient, more robot-like until what was once an intelligent, thinking human being is now nothing but a khaki idiot. Yesterday, in, in front of the entire platoon, he made Epstein unscrew the top of his head and take his brains out. I fooled him. I only took out my mucous membrane. <laughs> I am fighting hard to retain my true identity. And the only time I am able to hold on to who I am is in the still, still of the night. Wow, what a weekend. Hi, Hennessy. Hey. How are hey. you guys there? <laughs> hey, Hennessy, you have to listen to this. You're in it too. What is it? The Secret and Private Memoirs of Eugene M. Jerome. He let you read it? Nah, but we're going to ask him if it's all right when we get through. <laughs> you have no right to read that. That's like opening someone's mail. Bullshit. It's all about us. Private things about every one of us. That's public domain, like, like in the newspapers. A newspaper's published. Unpublished memoirs are the sole and private property of the writer. Great. And I thought all the Jews was just doctors. I didn't know they were lawyers, too. I'm not a Jew anymore, Wachowski. What do you mean by that? I converted to Catholicism yesterday. In six weeks, I hope to become a priest. And my first act of service to the Holy Father is to have you excommunicated. So get off my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's funny. Goddamn Jews are really funny. Hey, Epstein, <laughs> I'm beginning to like you, I swear to Christ. Yeah. You guys interested in hearing the rest of this or not? No, I'm not. Fine. I thought you were Gene's friend, Arnold. He didn't lock his locker. Why then would he keep something so private in an open locker? <clears throat> There's no logic to it. I have no interest in illogical things. You just tell Gene I had nothing to do with this. You hear me? Yeah. Go on. After, uh, still, still at night. <laughs> at night, I listen to the others breathing in their sleep. It is then that their fears and self-doubts become more, more apparent than during their waking hours. One night, a sudden scream from Selridge that sounded like he was calling out the name, please. <coughs> 
This kid is his girl, or possibly his mother. Yeah, he's <laughs> full of crap. Yeah, well, who's Louise? My mother. <laughs> but he's full of crap. I never called yeah. my mother Louise. Sure. The poor baby wants his mother. <laughs> hey, I don't like being spied on. I don't want to hear any more of this. The dirty bastard! Wait till you hear what he writes about me! Hey, it's him! Put it away! <laughs> Hi, guys! Thank you, Hey, James. So, how was your weekend? Fine. Great. The best. Good, 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 good. Well? Well, what? What was it like? Come on, give us the details. Was it empty saddles in the old corral? Or was it swing, swing, swing? It was more like moonlight cocktail. It was chatty. Chatty? Your first time in the sack with a pro was chatty? She's not a pro. She only does it on weekends. Oh. So, so what does that make her? A semi-pro? <laughs> That's good. Perfect remark, Gasper. Well, at least we talked to each other. No. I wasn't in and out of there in two seconds. <laughs> she was a person to me. Not a pro. Self-righteous, Eugene. Be on guard against self-righteousness. The second time with swing, swing, swing. <laughs> <laughs> the second time? You mean you paid twice? No. It was a freebie on the house. Ah, you fool up. Why would she give you a free one? Yeah. Maybe I was her one million customer. Ah, <laughs> hey, Jerome, go blow it out your barracks bag. Come on. Has anyone seen my notebook? What notebook is that? The one I'm always writing in. Arnold, have you seen it? Why did you leave your locker unlocked? Because I lost my key in the shower drain. There was nothing valuable in it except my book. I thought I could trust people around here. That's really funny, Jerome. Because we thought we could trust you too. Oh, and what's that mean? You had no right reading that. Give it to me, Kowski. Ah, uh, give it to him. Nobody's interested. <laughs> no. You ain't interested in what he says about you, honey. I said give it to me, then. Oh. <laughs> Just gonna hold you up. If you want it broken, it's up to you. Hey, what does he say about me? Kowski, please don't read it. If it gets boring, I'll stop. Let's see. I can't make Don Connie out yet. Basically, he's an okay guy, and we've had some interesting conversation. If you don't mind sticking to the subjects of popular music and baseball. But there's something about him you just can't rely on. And if I was ever in any real trouble, Don Connie's the last one I'd turn to. <laughs> Let's just hope you never have to count on me. I don't mean anything by it. It's just the thoughts in my head when I'm writing. They change every day. Let him go, Selrinch. Hey, you want to take his place? I don't care who's on the break. <laughs> hey, you ready for the best part? Here's the best part. Listen to this. 
Wachowski is pure animal. His basic instincts are all physical. And he eats his meals like a horse eating his oats. Hey, Epstein, can I sue him for defamation of... What? Character. Yeah. Only if his intent is to prove malice. And in your case, it's not possible. <laughs> yeah, go on. What else does he say about you? Let's see. He masturbates in bed four to five times a night. He has no shame in it, and his capacities are near inexhaustible. Sometimes at night when he has a discharge, he announces it to the room. Number five, torpedo fired, load number six. <laughs> That's pretty good reporting. This guy should be on Time Magazine or something. <laughs> Please stop it. You want to read it, read it to yourself. What do you mean? You're making me famous. Maybe the movies will buy this one. It'd make a great picture for John Wayne. <laughs> Is that more? Yeah, where was I? You just find number five. Oh yeah, here. <clears throat> Despite Bukowski's lack of culture, sensitivity, or the pursuit of anything minutely intellectual, his, his greatest strength is his consistency of character and his earnest belief that he truly belongs on the battlefield. He is clearly the best soldier among us, dependable under pressure, and it would, would not surprise me if Wachowski came out of this war with, with the Medal of Honor. Do you really mean that, Jerome? I told you. I don't mean any of it. I get a thought and I write it down. Right now I would describe you in three words. A yellow bastard! They don't give the Medal of Honor to yellow bastards. Let him go, Sal. What do you want to write all this stuff down for? Oh, what you're going to do is make a lot of guys unhappy. What I write is my business. Now give me my book. Wait a minute. I think I deserve to hear my life story. No, Arnold, I beg you, you don't read it. They're only my private thoughts, and if you take them, you steal from me. I gather then it's unflattering? Don't you know me by now, Jean? I can't be unflattered. I'm past it. However... If you don't want me to read it, I won't read it. But I don't, I think you know that I don't think we would be able to be truly honest with each other from this moment on. Put it back in your throat. <sighs> well, don't we get to hear it? Sure, Cassie, that's what we're fighting the war about, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> on with Ed Steve. Is truly the most fascinating and complex man I've ever met, and his relentless pursuit of truth, logic, and reason fascinates me. In the same proportion that his obstinacy and unnecessary heroics drive me to distraction. But I love him for it. In the same manner that I love Joe DiMaggio for making the gesture of catching a long fly ball to center seem like the last miracle performed by God in modern times. But often. I hold back to showing my love and affection for Arnold because I think he might misinterpret it. It just happens to be my instinctive feeling that Arnold is homosexual and it bothers me that it bothers me. You see why I find life so interesting? Here is a man of my own faith and background potentially intelligent and talented, who in six weeks has decided that a Cretan like Wachowski is going to win the Medal of Honor and that me, his most esteemed and dearest friend, is a fairy. Here's a problem worthy of a Talmudic scholar. Good night, fellas. It's 
my opinion that no one gets a wink of sleep tonight.
Is there any among you who does not know the meaning of the word fellatio? I don't. <laughs> For the uninformed, fellatio is an act of committing oral intercourse. Is there any among you who does not know the meaning of the word oral or intercourse? It is encouraging to know that my platoon is made up of mental giants. And exactly, oh, 155 this morning, Sergeant Riley of Baker Company entered the dark and latrine situated in his barracks. When he hit the light switch, lo and behold, he encountered two members of this regiment in the act of the aforementioned exercise. Now, when I was in Boy Scouts, that sort of thing came under the heading of experimentation. In the wartime, U.S. Army, it is considered a criminal offense. Punishable by court-martial, dishonorable discharge, and a possible five-year prison term. Soldier in Company B was a Private Harvey J. Lindstrom. The other soldier, whose back was the Sergeant Riley, was on the scene and made his escape by jumping out an open window with his pants somewhere around his ankles. <laughs> a feat of dexterity worthy of paratrooper. Sergeant Riley, a man with five pounds of shrapnel on his leg, gave chase, but to no avail, but reported seeing the man enter this barracks in approximately, oh, 200 hours. These are the facts, gentlemen. I will be brief. Does the guilty party wish to step forward, admit his indiscretion, and save this company? What I promise you will be pain, anguish, and humiliation beyond the endurance of man. No, I do not think so. I'm just going to have to pick him out, won't I? It's amazing what you can find out. When you go eyeball to eyeball. Blake Selridge. Look at me. <coughs> Stand up, soldier. They were too hot. will be interrogated in the morning. If he names the man he consorted with tonight, it is very possible that Private Lindstrom's sentence will be significantly less. A worse than thought to the gentleman whose eyeballs I just referred to. All le weekend leaves are likewise canceled. The moral of the story is, when you get real horny, do unto yourself what you would otherwise do unto others. <laughs> Christ. Well, what are we going to do about this? Don't say it, Mikowski. Just don't say it. I don't have to say it. We know who he's talking about. We all know who it is. You even wrote it down in your book, didn't you? Well, didn't you? I also wrote that you're an animal. If I'm right, then you belong in the cavalry with a saddle on your back. <laughs> I'll show it to Toomey, all right? Then Epstein can start serving his five years, and you can move into the stable. That should satisfy a horse's ass like yourself. Stop it, both of you. This isn't any of our business. Let the army take care of it. No more base privileges here. No more weekend passes. You're telling me that's none of my business. Carney's right. The army will take care of it. I'm sorry, Arnold. I swear to God, I'm sorry I ever wrote it. Actually, I'm rather enjoying it. It sounds like an Agatha Christie novel. Murder by Felicio. <laughs> the title's no good. Sounds like an Italian ice cream. <laughs> Murder on the Felicio Express. You really think this is funny, don't you, Epstein? Well, we'll see how much you'll be laughing at Leavenworth. And he calls me a creep. There's nothing we can do about it tonight anyway. So why don't we just hit the sack? Hey! 
I don't see what's such a big deal anyway. A guy ought to be able to do what he wants to. As long as he doesn't do it to me. <laughs> That's a mistake, Dean. Once you start compromising your principles, you're a candidate for mediocrity. I learned a very important lesson that night. People believe whatever they read. Something magical happens once it's put down on paper. They figure no one would go to the trouble of writing it down if it wasn't the truth. Responsibility was my new watchword. Anyway, I knew the Army must have really scared Private Harvey J. Lindstrom pretty badly that night. Because I knew when I heard the phone ring in Sergeant Toomey's room, the poor guy must have talked his guts out. I went out for a walk because what happened within the next 10 seconds was something I didn't want to see or hear. In the following soldier's name, he's called he is requested to dress in his Class A uniform and follow me. Hennessy, James J. What for? That's a matter you can discuss with military police. Come on, son. I don't like it any better than you do. Then why did you come to a dance? 
That's a logical question. Because I like to talk. And I was hoping I'd meet someone I felt like talking to. Well, we can talk while we dance. Well, it's hard for me because I'm always counting when I dance. Whatever you said, I would answer one, two, one, two. Well, I'll only ask you mathematical questions. <laughs> I'll bet you didn't know how to march before you got into the army. No, I didn't. Well, if you can learn to march, then you can learn to dance. Yeah, except if I didn't learn to march, I'd be doing push-ups until I was 83. <laughs> Well, I'm not that certain. But if it makes you feel bad and uncomfortable, I want to intrude on your privacy. It was very nice meeting you. Bye. Uh, okay. Okay, what? One, two, one, two. <laughs> Are you sure? Positive. <laughs> Good. All I have to do is step into place, right? Right. Oh, you're doing fine, except your lips are moving. If my lips don't move, my feet don't move. <laughs> <laughs> Try talking instead of counting. All right. Let's see. My name is Jean. One, two, one. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Well, we're making headway. Just plain Jean. If you want the long version, it's Eugene Morris Jerome. What's yours? Daisy. Daisy? Well, that's incredible, because Daisy's my favorite character in literature. Oh, Daisy Miller or Daisy Buchanan? Oh, Buchanan. The Great Gatsby's one of the all-time great books. Uh, actually, I never read Daisy Miller. Is it good? Oh, it's wonderful. Although I preferred The Great Gatsby. New York must have been thrilling in the 20s. Oh, it was, it was. Uh, that's where I'm from. Well, actually, I only saw a little of it from my baby carriage. But it's still a wonderful city. What else? What else what? What else have you read? I mean, you just don't go around reading books with Daisy in the title, do you? <laughs> no. Well, I like books with Anna in the title, too. Anna Karenina, Anna Christie. Well, that was a play by O'Neill. Oh, Eugene O'Neill. Playwrights named Eugene are usually my favorite. <laughs> I'm sorry. Listen, can we sit down? I mean, I've stepped on your toes at least three times so far, and you haven't said a word. You deserve a rest. <laughs> oh, right there. <coughs> Can't believe I'm having a conversation like this in Biloxi, Mississippi. Oh, uh, you don't like Biloxi? Oh, it's not a bad town. It's all right. It's okay. I hate it. <laughs> well, I'm not that fond of myself. Actually, I'm from Gulfport. We all are. Gulfport? No kidding. I know a girl from Gulfport. <laughs> really? Oh, who is she? Maybe I know her. Oh, no, I doubt it. She's in the clothing business. <laughs> <laughs> Do you go to school there? Mm -hmm. St. Mary's. Oh, it's Catholic. An all-girls school. Oh. Well, guys really have to move on. We're supposed to mingle. If we're with anyone more than ten minutes, sisters get very nervous. Oh. Well, we haven't used up our ten minutes yet. Please, I really like talking to you. Well, just a few minutes. Would you like a Coke or something? Well, it's way on the other side of the room. You could use up at least a minute and a half getting it. Oh, you're right. Let the next guy get you a Coke. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to sound too prejudiced, but, well, I didn't think there were any girls in the South like you. I mean, so easy to talk to. Oh, there are, believe me. Anyway, I'm not really from the South. Well, I was raised in Chicago. My father used to work on a newspaper there. Oh, but then he got a job in New Orleans on the examiner, uh, city editor. But he took off six months first to write a book. Oh, your father's a writer? That's incredible, because that's what I want to be. 
listen. I hope this doesn't sound too forward, and I hope it doesn't offend you, but, well, would you mind it too terribly much if I told you that I thought you were extremely pretty? No. Why should it? I like it when boys think I'm pretty. Do lots of boys think you're pretty? Well, I hope so, but they don't always say it. They seem very shy around me. My dad thinks I intimidate my boys my own age. I'm glad you don't seem intimidated. <laughs> well, no, I told you I'm from New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of writer do you want to be? Oh, well, I don't know yet. All I've written are a few short stories. Oh, in my memoirs, I keep a notebook and write down all my thoughts and what I feel about things. I've been doing it since I was a kid. Well, my father kept a journal the last few years, too. That's how he got to write this book. Well, I read that that's a, a good way to become a writer. Well, a few people read my memoirs and they were very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Marisa is glaring at me across the room. I'd better see if someone else wants to dance. Well, I had a very nice time talking to you, Eugene Morris Jerome. Well, I'm trying to remember your whole name in case I ever see it in print someday. Well, you didn't tell me your whole name in case I ever wanted to write a letter to St. Mary's Catholic All-Girls School in Gulfport. Hannigan. Daisy Hannigan. Daisy Hannigan. Great name. F. Scott Fitzgerald should have thought of that before Buchanan. <laughs> well, you have my permission to use it. I wouldn't mind in the least being immortalized. Goodbye, Eugene. Goodbye, Daisy. Oh, God, every time I say that, I feel like I'm speaking literature. You say nice things. Well, in fact, you didn't say one wrong thing in that entire conversation. Goodbye. At last, something to live for. Daisy Hannigan. Oh, just try saying that name to yourself and see if you don't fall in love. Oh, I knew I had to see her again. When she smiled at me, I had tiny little heart attacks. Oh, oh, not enough to kill you. Just enough to keep you from walking straight. <laughs> Baby Hammond. <laughs> Baby Hammond. <laughs> You don't mind me saying that, do you? Because you know that's what you are. Ding, dong, dung. You say so, Sergeant. You're damn right I say so. I say so because I have a loaded 45 pistol in my hand. And I am also pissed drunk. If a pissed drunk sergeant has a loaded 45 pointed at the head of a piece of dung, the pissed drunk sergeant hates and despises. Well, how would you describe the situation, Epstein? Delicate. <laughs> Extremely delicate. I would describe it as fraught, the possibility of cracking in your pants. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Epstein. I have invited you into my private quarters with every intention of putting this pistol to your ear and blowing a tunnel clean through your head. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Sergeant. I'll bet you are. If I were you, I would consider that bad news from home. Going now, Epstein. I'll bet you'll ask you're sorry you ever took me on, ain't you? Well, some days are not as good as others, I admit. <laughs> <laughs> when you attack a man, never attack strong point. My strong point is discipline. 
I weaned on this plan. I sucked this one from my mother's breast and received it on my bare butt at the age of five from the buckle of my father Sam Brown armor belt. I love that bastard. Made me strong. Damn right. He made me a leader of men. He made me despise weakness in myself. The weakness that can destroy a man's purpose in life. And my purpose in life, Epstein, is victory. Moral victory, spiritual victory, victory over temptation, victory on the battlefield, and victory in a goddamn army back in Bluff, Mississippi. Now that's what my daddy taught me. What in the hell did your daddy ever teach you? Not much. <laughs> Two things, baby. Dignity and compassion. Dignity and compassion? Are oh, you shitting me, Epstein? <laughs> piece of dung would never shit a piss drunk sergeant with a loaded 45. <laughs> Don't test me, Epstein. I'll bury you with dignity, but not much compassion. Why the hell are you always taking me on, boy? I'll smart you, outrank you, outlast you. You know that. I know that, sergeant. You know what the irony of this situation is, Epstein? Is it Epstein or Epstein? Either one. The irony of this situation, Epstein or Epstein, is that despite the fact that you hate every discipline bone in my body, you're gonna miss me when I go. Miss me like a baby misses her mama's nipple. Are you going somewhere, Sergeant? Didn't I just say that? Didn't I just say that I was leaving this base? No, Sergeant, you didn't. When are you leaving? Oh, 0700, April 3rd, 1943. That's tomorrow morning. And I know how much you boys are gonna miss me. But I don't want anybody making a fuss or anything. No gifts, you understand? If you like, you can clean a couple of trees for me, but that's about it. Well, where are you going? I am reporting to Dixon Veterans Hospital, Camp Rawlins, Roanoke, Virginia. Believe in gratitude, the army's gonna replace my steel plate with sterling silver. That means I'll be able to hop my head in any pawn shop in the country. How about that? Well, how long will you be gone? I just told you, you dumb son of a bitch! <laughs> I am reporting to the Veterans Hospital. They do not send you back from the Veterans Hospital. You become a veteran. <laughs> you walk around the blue bathroom at night you listen to Jack Benny and play. Check up with the other basket weavers. What, what I'm trying to tell you, you, you toilet bowl cleanser, is that my active career in the U.S. Army has been terminated. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Sergeant. Don't give me none of your goddamn compassion, Epstein. <laughs> compassion is just going to buy you a star update of it in the Arlington Cemetery. Yes, Sergeant. They can put 65 pounds of nuts and bolts in my head. Give me a brown tweed suit and a jaw pump and gas. Then I will still be the best damn top sergeant you have ever met in your short but sweet life, FC or FDI. Well, I'm sure of that, Sergeant. One night, in my room here, I heard a game being played in barracks. I heard Jerome ask each and every man what would he want if he had one last week to live. I played that game right along with you. And I put my five bucks on my bunk. Just like the rest of you. It's my five bucks. You tell me if I would have won the game. But the game's over, Sarge. Not yet, boy. Not yet. <laughs> All right. Now. You know what I'd want to do with my last week on Earth? What's that, Sergeant? I would like to take one army rookie. The greatest, misfit, dumbass, malcontent, subhuman, useless son of a bitch I ever ran across and turn him into an obedient, disciplined soldier that this army could be proud of. That will be my victory. You, all that subhuman misfit, Epstein. <laughs> if I got before I leave here, I'm gonna do it and pick up my five bucks. You hear me? But none of us actually did it, Sergeant. It was just a game. 
That's me, boy. On your feet, that's me. Well, I, I, I don't think you're in any condition to be doing this. On your feet! But he and her! A crime has been committed in this room tonight, Epstein. A breach of army regulations. A non-commissioned officer has threatened the life of an enlisted man by brandishing loaded weapon at him. That caused the provocation. Said act being provoked by an inebriated platoon leader while on duty. I am that platoon leader. And it is your unquestioned duty to report this incident to the proper authorities. Look, that really won't be necessary. As I am pissed drunk and dangerous, it is also your duty to relieve me of my loaded weapon. You never really thought you were going to use it, Sergeant. Take my weapon, goddammit! What do you mean, take it? Well, how am I supposed to take it? Demand it, you weasel bastard! I'll blow your puny brains out! Take? Okay. <laughs> May I have your gun, Sergeant? <laughs> Pistol, turd head! <laughs> May I have? Your pistol, Sergeant? Force it out of my hand. Force it out of your hand? Grab my wrist if you dare. Good! Okay. Thanks. Now, now why don't you just lie down right there and get a good night's sleep? To probably charge me, you will need witnesses. Call in the platoon. Call in the platoon? Oh, you don't want to do this in front of the men. Call sergeant. them in, soldier. Guys? <laughs> Guys, you want to come in here a minute? Look, Sergeant. But this isn't going to change anything. But this is just as illogical and as insane as before. Maybe. But it's regulation. As long as you obey your regulations, Epstein, I win. <laughs> Men, as you can see, I'm pissed to the girls, and I've just threatened to blow Epstein's brains out. Private Epstein has relieved me of my weapon <coughs> and placed me under arrest. You are all witnesses. Private Epstein will now take his prisoner to company headquarters to face charges and complaints. I would just like to add, Private Epstein has displayed outstanding courage and carried out his duty in the manner of a first-rate soldier. I am putting him up for accommodation. I'm ready when you are, soldier. Well, we've the time, Epstein. Let's go. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to file charges. Now, remember what your father taught you. Show something to a man that's going to Virginia tomorrow. Well, suppose... Suppose you just get company punishment, like the rest of us. Now, you can handle this any way you want. As long as just sir. Sergeant Toomey? Who? I will drop all charges against you if you give me two hundred push-ups. <laughs> I accept your compassion offer, F.T. Thank you. On the floor, please. <laughs> Count off. Yes, Private Epstein. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't freaking seven, believe this. Twelve. 13, 14, 15. I won the fantasy game fair and square because this actually came through. In a way, they both won. Because if for only one brief moment, Toomey had made Arnold the best soldier in the platoon. 
The next day, Cooley went to Virginia, and he never saw him again. Our new sergeant was the same logical and decent man. And after four weeks with him, we realized how much we missed Sergeant Cooley. One should never underestimate the stimulation of eccentricity. Daisy and I corresponded three times a week, and I visited her twice in Gulfport. And the most we ever did was hold hands. I was either too shy or she was too Catholic. <laughs> Finally, we finished basic training, and I knew we'd be shipping out soon. Hi. Hello. Oh, your hands feel cold. And yours feel warm. Would you like to go somewhere? Uh, Down to the lake. Or to Overton's hotel. They have dancing there until midnight. Or we could just walk. I can't. I have to be back in ten minutes. I shouldn't even be out now. Ten minutes? Are you serious? I came all the way from Biloxi. I know, but it's Good Friday. Isn't that a holiday? No, it's a holy day. It's the day that Christ our Lord died. Well, we have to abstain from parties or movies or dates. Oh, it's a day of prayer and mourning. Well, why do they call it Good Friday? It sounds like lousy Friday to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it. It's my fault. I should have told you in my last letter. Oh, we can make up for it next week, can't we? Well, I don't know if I'll be here next week. We finished basic training last Friday. I could be shipping out any day. Shipping out? Oh, to where? Oh, Europe, the Pacific. They haven't told us yet. Overseas? No soon? Well, they can't keep us here forever. The army needs reinforcements. We've already lost a private and a sergeant, and we haven't even left the left <laughs> <laughs> Can't you stay out just a little later? I mean, I know I'm Jewish, but I don't think Christ your Lord is going to hold it against you personally. <laughs> well, I can't, Eugene. Well, I have to be faithful to my beliefs. Well, what about being faithful to me? Well, I have been. I haven't been to another USO dance since we met. I, I just don't feel like dancing with anyone else anymore. Do you mean that? Cross my heart. Don't cross it. Religion is always getting in our way. I believe. Well, I think you're a very special person, Eugene. Well, if you want me to, I'll write to you as often as you want. Of course I do. And I want a picture. I don't even have a picture of you. What kind of picture? Do you have one where I could feel your skin? <laughs> if I did, I wish I had one where I could squeeze your hand. I'm going to shoot my foot. I swear I don't want to leave here. I'm glad you feel the same way about me, Eugene. You know I do, Daisy. I'd have come even if I knew I only had five minutes with you. Daisy, I... What, Eugene? Well, I want to say something, but I'm having trouble with the work. Well, that doesn't sound like Eugene the writer to me. Well, I'm not writing now. I'm Eugene the talker. <laughs> Daisy, what I want to say is... Oh, damn it, why can't I say it? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Especially on Good Friday. I'll say ten Hail Marys for you. Well, you don't have to do that. They're not going to be do me any good. <laughs> what is it you wanted to say? Oh, Daisy, you know what it is. I've never said it to a girl before in my life. I don't know what it's going to sound like when it comes out. Well, say it, and I'll tell you. I love you, Daisy. All oh, nuts that came out wrong. That's not the way it is. <laughs> I've never heard it said so beautifully. What do you mean? How many other guys have said it to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, none. I met in the movies, not Tyrone Power, or Robert Taylor, or even Clark Gable. <laughs> well, they get paid for saying it. I'm in business for myself. <laughs> I remember everything you say to me. Well, when I go home at night, I write them all down. Whenever I miss you, I read them over. Oh, yeah? 
Well, if you're keeping your diary, keep your locker closed. I don't want to be the talk of St. Mary. Oh, it's eight o'clock. I really have to go. Well, well, you didn't say it to me yet. Oh, that I love you? Not like that. Just throw it in too quickly. <laughs> you have to take a breath, prepare for it, and then say it. All right. Now I've taken a breath, and now I'm preparing for it, and now I'll say it. I love you, Eugene. Oh, we can't kiss, not on Good Friday. <laughs> but you have to kiss after you say I love you. Even God wouldn't forgive you that. All right. I love you, Eugene. I, I've got to go. Baby. This is the most important moment of our lives. It's the first time we're in love. That only happens once. And after tonight, I don't know if we'll ever see each other again. Eugene, don't say that. Please don't say that. Well, it's possible. I pray it doesn't happen, but it's possible. I need a proper kiss, Daisy. <laughs> a kiss to commemorate a night I'll never forget as long as I live. I'll even say a hundred Hail Mary for you on the bus right back. Okay? Oh, I think you'd better say two hundred on the bus. <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot. Oh, this is for you. It's a book. Really? What book? I love your taste in books. Well, it's blank pages for your memoirs. Page one can start with tonight. Take care of yourself, Eugene Morris Jerome. Even if some other girl does get you, I'll always know I was your first one. I knew at that moment I was a long way from becoming a writer because there was no words I could think of to describe the, the happiness I felt in those ten minutes with Daisy Hanson. Yes. 
so far, two of my main objectives had come true. I'd lost my virginity, and I fell in love. Now all I had to do was become a writer and stay alive. On that first turn train ride to the Luxie, we were all nervous. On the train now heading for an Atlantic City port, we were all scared. I closed my book and tried to sleep. When I opened my book two years later, I was on a train just like this one heading for Fort Dix to be discharged. I reread what I wrote the night Bukowski broke into my locker to see how accurate my predictions were. Roy Selrick served in every campaign in France, was eventually made a sergeant, and was sent back to Biloxi to train new recruits. He now has been doing 300 push-ups a day. <laughs> Joseph Bukowski was wounded in Arnheim by a board of shell and lost his right leg straight up to his chest. He, he didn't get the Medal of Honor, but he was cited for outstanding courage in battle. Don Carney? Well, after six months of constant attack by enemy fire, the top of his life is severe depression and neurological disorder. He never sings anymore. Arnold F.C. was listed as missing in action, and his body was never traced or found. But Arnold's a tricky guy. He may still be alive teaching philosophy in Greece somewhere. He just never liked doing things the army way. Daisy Hannigan? Well, she married a guy from New Orleans. Her name is now Daisy Horowitz. <laughs> oh well. She sends me a postcard every time she has a new baby. As for me, well, I never saw a day's action. My first day in England, I was in a jeep accident, and my back was so badly injured they wanted to send me home. Instead, they gave me a job writing for Stars and Stripes, the GI newspaper. I still suffer pains of guilt because my, my career was enhanced by World War II. I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad I didn't know all that the night our train left the Luxy for places and events unknown. Tangerine, she is all they claim. With eyes of night and lips as bright as flame. I have seen close to Tangerine across the water.